Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my morning message. And today, my message is entitled The Murder of Jesus. The Murder of Jesus. And our, and our key text is taken from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. Um, before I start, I'd just like to give uh, honor, praise, and thanks and glory to God for this uh, privilege to be here to preach this message, especially about the, um, the, um, uh, the events that happened to Jesus prior to his resurrection. Um, and, um, and, and it is a very sobering message as I prepared it, and I'll speak a little bit more uh, 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 towards the end of this. Anyway, the murder of Jesus, Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. And by way of introduction, um, I, you know, as the world prepares to observe Easter with the Easter bunnies and egg hunts and parties and whatever, you know, the witch nun uh, uh, was ever spoken of by God in his word, uh, we shall look at the events that, uh, that were appropriated for this so-called celebration. Um, and we look at the we'll look at the arrest of Jesus, and we'll look at the trial of Jesus, and we'll look at the crucifixion of Jesus, right? Uh, as people celebrate Good Friday, um, um, uh, believing that Jesus was, uh, died and was crucified on Friday, that couldn't have been the case. Because if Jesus said that he'd be three days and three nights uh, in the belly of the earth, um, um, then he could not have been uh, crucified uh, uh, on Friday. Because between Friday and Sunday, uh, the first day of the week is Sunday, uh, and by dawn, Jesus was, uh, was already uh, uh, resurrected. You, you can't get three days and three nights from there, but that's not the, the point of this message, right? You know, the title of my message is not a mistake. Uh, Jesus Christ was murdered, as simple as that. Uh, but ultimately, his murder would benefit the entire world, all right? Uh, again, our key text uh, Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Let's read that, uh, beginning with verse 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Uh, Peter had just healed somebody, and, um, and, and the people were all amazed. You know, how can this, how can this uh, thing be, this, this lame man walk? Um, and so Peter said, you know, why are you, mar why are you marveling at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we, made, we had made this m a man to walk? Is it by our power that this man now walks? Then verse 13, the God of Abraham, the God of, uh, the God of Abraham of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son, uh, Jesus whom ye delivered up, right, and denied him in the presence of, of Pilate when he, had, uh, when he was determined to let him go, all right? Um, these people, the same people who, who was like, wow, what's this miracle? You know, were the ones who delivered um, Jesus to Pilate. And when Pilate was going to let him go because he found nothing wrong with him, uh, he, that he'd done nothing deserving of death, um, uh, uh, he was going to let him go. Uh, they said, no, no, you know, you crucify him, give us Barabbas. And verse 14, but ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. So instead of embracing the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Life, these people wanted a murderer. And verse 15, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof ye, we are witnesses. Peter said, we were there to witness all this. We witness his death and we witness his resurrection. But, um, but let's start with a word of prayer first. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this time to be here to preach about your son, Jesus Christ, the arrest, the trial, and the crucifixion of Christ. Lord, thank you for this honor and privilege. Father, it is very sobering uh, and humbling to do this. And Lord, so just guide my tongue, guide my thoughts, and guide my words, Lord. Uh, my, my words, Lord. And uh, I just ask that your word uh, 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 will, um, will affect everyone hearing and that, uh, and that it will bring about good fruit. So Lord, we commit this time into your hands. So we thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go into this as quickly as I can. Um, there's just a lot of material to, to cover. I, don't, you know, I cannot cover all of them all 
So, you know, I hope my message today will bring the point across. First, we look at the arrest of Jesus, or rather the unjust arrest of Jesus. We look at Jesus the righteous, right? Why was Jesus arrested? What did he do wrong? Absolutely nothing. He preached nothing but the truth, and people hated the truth. John 3, what? I think it was uh, John 3.18 or, G- or John 3.19. Um, people hate the truth. People hate light because their works are darkness, right? And they prefer darkness to, to light, lest their deeds be reproved. All right? They don't like to be told that they're wrong, that they are not right with God. All right? Jesus preached the hated truth. All right? John chapter 8, verse 40, But ye seek to kill me, a man who, that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. L- listen, what I'm telling you, I hear from my Father, from God, uh, from God in heaven. This did not Abraham. When Abraham, you know, when people, when God spoke to Abraham, Abraham didn't say, God, you mind your own business. You mind your own beeswax. All right? This did not Abraham. Then Jesus went about his father's business, not his own. All right? He didn't, he didn't come to establish his own righteousness, establish his own will or whatever. You know, and, uh, and, and, you know, he went about his father's business, not his and certainly not man's business. Man didn't want him to preach this hated truth. But what did he do? He didn't say, okay, man, I'll, I'll take a step back and I'll stop. He didn't do that. He continued preaching with power, with conviction, and he didn't stop. Right? But look at Luke chapter 2, verse 49. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? He said to his mother and father, you know, Mary and Joseph, why is it that he come and seek, to, to seek me? He was a young man. He was a young boy, rather. And, um, and, and they were at the temple. And, um, and Mary and Joseph were, were on the way back. Um, when they found that Jesus was missing, and they went back to the temple and saw him teaching and uh, teaching in the temple. So Jesus said to them, and he said to them, what, how is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Don't you know that I need, I need to go about my father's business? <laughs> right? John chapter 6, verse 38, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will. I didn't come to do what I wanted to do. But the will of him that sent me, I came to do what I was told to do, what I was instructed to do. I come to do the will of my Father. John, uh, rather, Jesus preached the doctrine of God the Father. John chapter 7, verse 16. And Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. God the Father sent him, and therefore Jesus preached the doctrine of God the Father. But man hated it. They hated it so much that they killed the messenger. Right? And Jesus respected nobody, right? Romans chapter 2, verse 11. For there's no respect of persons with God. God does not respect anybody. He doesn't look upon somebody and say, oh, he is a so-and-so. Oh, he's not a so-and-so. So I will, I will treat this person with kid gloves and that one's like, Pfft. he doesn't do that. There's no respect of, God, of persons with God. Everybody is equal. Or rather, they are on the same footing. Right? Jesus cared not for the feelings of man. He had, no issues call- he had no issues calling out anyone for their wrongdoings, particularly hypocrisy. Right? But, man, but I tell you, 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 know, you know, today in, in so many churches around the world, you can't do that anymore. You cannot preach the truth without somebody getting offended. People will say that you're unloving. Oh, I know you preach the truth, but you don't do it in a very loving manner. Excuse me? Okay, anyway, Matthew chapter 23, verses uh, uh, 23 through 33. All right, I'll try to read this as quickly as you can, as I, as I can. Please follow with me. Here is Jesus, all right, calling the religious righteous, you know, hypocrites. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have done, ought ye to have done, and not leave the other undone. You are so, you know, you're so caught up with your traditions that you've left out the weightier matters of God, he said. All right, verse 24. Ye blind guides. He called them ye blind guides. You strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. You do the wrong things. You got it all backwards. All right? The cart is before the horse. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and, and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and, and excess. It looks good on the outside. It look, rather, it looks good on the outside, but on the inside it's full of corruption, full of putrefaction, full of whatever. All right? Full of dirt and uncleanness and all that sort of thing. Thou blind Pharisee, Jesus said. All right? You folks are spiritually blind. They're not literally blind. They're not physically blind, but they're, they're, phys uh, they're, they're spiritually blind. All right? Cleanse first that which is within the club, cup and the, and the platter, and that the outside of them may be clean also. Don't just clean the outside. Clean the inside also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for your light unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are full, well, within full of dead men's bones and, f and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. You look right, I'm righteous unto men. But inside is full of rubbish, full of corruption, full of putrefaction, full of uncleanness, right? Um... Uh, 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 you know, like whited sepulchres. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my place. You know, which appear nice on the outside. But, you know, verse 28, even so, ye, uh, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but are within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Verse 29, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the, of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Um, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. If we had been with our, our forefathers, we would not have done this. No, 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 no. Verse 31, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, Jesus said. Ye are witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them that killed the prophets, because you do the same thing also. Fill ye up then the measure, uh, the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? That's not very nice to hear, is it? But Jesus held back nothing. Was it unloving? Oh, yeah. To the snowflakes, to the thin skin, yes, it was very unloving. It's like, how dare he do this to me? And that's exactly how, you know, how they felt. Except that if Jesus were to tell me, say the same thing to me, I would take a, a big step back and say, there's something wrong with me. John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Right? And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and, of, and, the, sh and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the, money, uh, ch the changers' money and overthrew tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make, ye not, uh, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. This is what, this is what Jesus did. All right? They made the temple a house of merchandise and Jesus came and upturned everything and threw them out of the temple. Right? Jesus became hated because of the righteousness of God. John, John 8, uh, 40. John chapter 8, verse 40. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Galatians 4, 16. Paul suffered the same thing. For crying out loud, uh, uh, myself along with, uh, along with a few other people suffered the same thing also. All right? Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? We became enemies of people because we told them the truth and they didn't like it. And Jesus told them the truth and they hated him for that. All right? How does one become an enemy? Simply preach the hated truth about them. All right? To God, this is an act of love. Hey, look, listen, I need to tell you that you're wrong, that you, can get, that you may get right with me. I cannot, I cannot do anything else until you know that you're wrong, until you repent, until you turn from all that, and you turn to me by my son, through my son, in my son. <clears throat> all right? To God, it's an act of love. But to man, it's an act of hatred. All right? Go figure. Anyway, the, Jesus, the righteous, now we come into the scheming against Jesus. All right? Who would know the scriptures better than the one who inspired it. You know, Jesus preached and taught with power and authority. Matthew chapter 7, verses 28 and 29. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these, saying, uh, these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Wow! For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. 
didn't go, mm, uh, mm, uh, I don't know, let me check. Jesus taught with authority because he's God, because he inspired the word of God. He's the author of the word of God, for crying out loud. His authority and works of miracles eroded the power and prestige of the lawyers, the scribes, the religious leaders, the high priests, whatever, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the elders. Right? And they hated him for that. You know, as such, many people gravitated towards Jesus and many became his disciples. Their, you know, their pride dented, the religious righteous sought to destroy Jesus, but they feared the people. Mark chapter 12, verse 12. Right? And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him and went their way. Right? They, they wanted to destroy him. Christ had done nothing wrong, let alone anything deserving death. He broke no law. He preached the truth and called out the hypocrites. Their pride got seriously dented and they hated him for that. If Jesus Christ had broken some law, they would have legal grounds to arrest him and charge him. In reality, they had none. What did, what did Jesus do that was so wrong? It hurt their sensibilities. It hurt their pride. And for that, Jesus must die. Hmm? Luke chapter 19, verses 48 and 40, uh, 47 and 48. And he taught daily in the temple. He was in the temple daily, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do. There was nothing that Jesus did that deserved their, his arrest, right? For all the people were very attentive unto, to hear him. He preached the truth. He preached righteousness, right? He preached nothing that deserved death, right? So they schemed against Jesus. Right? They schemed against him. Matthew chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. Then assembled the people together, the chief priests, uh, then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that, that they might take Jesus by what? By subtlety. And what is one of the characteristics of, of Satan? Subtle. Genesis chapter 3. All right? You just have to go, back, go to the beginning. And you find that subtlety all right, is not a good thing. And kill him. It consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. All right? So we got Jesus the righteous scheming against Jesus. Then we got the betrayer. Right? The schemer's dream to do away with Jesus came true when Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 apostles, came forward to offer Jesus to them. All right? Oh my goodness, Roy! Wasn't Judas Iscariot an apostle? Yes, he was an apostle. He was not saved. All right? Because if he was saved, he would not have done this. Matthew chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. Then assembled together, uh, uh, you know, again, I, I read this early. Then assembled together chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might, that might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. All right? So they wanted to do that. The schemers wanted to do that. You know, the thing is that Judas was not a true disciple of Christ. He, he was in the ministry. He was in Christ's ministry for what? For personal gain. John 12, verses 4 to 6, right? And saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why, is this not, why was not, not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said not because he cared for the poor. He didn't care. He didn't care for the poor. He cared for himself. But because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. All right, um, there were you know these are there are people in churches who will do things not for the sake of the gospel of Christ, sad to say, but for personal gain and prestige. All right, just a few years ago, um, uh, uh, well about seven years ago or so, um, somebody asked to be taken on staff in a church, just so that he could put it down on an application. Go figure, right? You know, Jesus being God was fully aware of Judas and his treachery. Matthew chapter 26, verses 21 through 24. And they did eat, and he said, Verily I say unto, uh, truly I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. He knew that what, among, amongst the twelve of you, one of you, are gonna, uh, one of you is going to betray me. 
in verse 22, and they were exceeding sorrowful and began to say, and began to say, uh, and began every one of them to say to, unto him, Lord, is it I? Jesus didn't point, didn't, didn't say specifically who, and they didn't know if they were going to betray God. So, uh, is it me? Is it I? Verse 23, and he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Verse 24, the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. Jesus it was prophesied that Jesus would die. All right? And this is, and, and, and that's exactly what's going to happen to Jesus. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Jesus said, hey, look, you know, this person who's, who, who will betray me, it's better that he wasn't born at all. You know, one day, Judas Iscariot will have a very special judgment reserved just for him. Right? Judas and the chief priest made a covenant for the betrayal of Christ. And, that be and the price of that betrayal? 30 pieces of silver. Right? 30 lousy pieces of silver. Matthew chapter 24, verses 14 through 16. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? Again, he did this for gain. He didn't do it because he didn't like Jesus or Jesus was, was a criminal and Jesus needed to be brought to justice. He did it for gain. Right? What will ye give me and, uh, give, give me and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted, they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. And they were happy with the transaction. Right? Instead, of, instead of saying, you shall not do this evil, they were happy with it. Luke 22 verse 5. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. Ooh, excellent. We got this chance to get Jesus right now. Yippee. All right, and it must be noted that this transaction was prohibited by God. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 20. Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. Deuteronomy 19, verses 16 through 20. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that, that which is wrong, then both men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the, and the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if, witness, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall he do, un, uh, then shall ye do unto him as he had taught a thought to do unto his brother, so shall ye put away, put evil away from among you. Right? There's an injunction from God that this is not to be done. And if it's done, then hey, look, you know, you, this is what you do to put this evil away from among you. And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth, henceforth commit no more such, uh, no more any such evil among you. Judas betrayed Jesus and the covenant, uh, and rather, that religious righteous went along with it. He, bear, he bore false witness against the Son of God. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 16 through 18. All right, thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. You don't go around tattling on, 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 don't be a tattletale among the people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy, uh, of thy neighbor. You will not stand against the blood of your neighbor. G uh, Judas Iscariot did precisely that. He stood against the blood of the Son of God. I am the Lord. Thou, uh, verse 17, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt, thou shalt in any wise uh, rebuke thy neighbor and shalt not suffer sin upon him. Verse 18, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Instead of stopping Judas, the chief priest happily parted money to him, profaning the very office they served, being complicit with Judas in a prohibited act, in an act of murder. All right? Then we have the arrest of Jesus, the unjust arrest of Jesus. Judas betrayed Ju uh, you know, you know, Jesus with an outward act of affection. Matthew chapter 26, verses 48 and 49. Now he that betrayed him gave him a sign. Uh, gave them a sign saying, Whom, uh, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Hold him fast. All right? Arrest him. Hang on to him. You know, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. You know, when that happened, Jesus called Judas Iscariot friend. 
right? Jesus was arrested by a heavily armed mob, a multitude carrying swords and staves from the religious righteous, uh, verses 47 and 48 of the same chapter, right? And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with, a, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Why are you here? Why, are you, why, why did you come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Jewish law stipulated that a man was innocent until otherwise proven. All right, yet Jesus was seized, denoted by the late, by, by, denoted by laid hands on. He was seized like a criminal. Verse 55, Matthew, uh, Matthew 26. In the same hour it said Jesus to the multitudes, are ye, came, are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you uh, teaching in the temple and you laid, you laid no hold on me. But you came at night to do this as if I'm a thief, as if I'm a, co a, a, a common criminal. But yet when I was daily with you in the temple, you didn't do that. If Jesus had broken Jewish or Roman law, why was he not, not arrested in plain sight during the day as he preached in the temple each day? The, rest, the arrest was done furtively under the cover of darkness to create, uh, rather to avoid creating an uproar with the people. They had to do this in secret. <laughs> Otherwise, they, they would not have been able to get away with it. Right? So we've got the unjust arrest of Jesus. Now we've got the unjust trial of Jesus. All right? We have a kangaroo court. It was all for show. The verdict was already uh, uh, predetermined, and as, as was the sentence. They just needed to dignify it with a show. Jesus was led to a waiting assembly. They were anxious to do away with, with, with Jesus. All right? Matthew chapter 26, verse 57, and went and... and uh, and they that laid hold, uh, that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. They were already waiting. They were anticipating this thing. All right, the court had only one purpose. It was to find Jesus guilty and then to pronounce the death sentence upon him. To this end, the court was only too happy to produce false witnesses. Right? Remember what I just said about false witnesses? Right? Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Right? Matthew chapter 26, verses 59 through, through 61. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus. They knew they had no case if they were to seek real witnesses because Jesus didn't do anything wrong. They needed lies to convict Jesus. To sort false witnesses against Jesus to put him to death. Verse 60, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At last came two false witnesses and one and said, and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. Funnily, the religious righteous did not rehearse with the false witnesses that they ought to say, you know, what they ought to say. Look at Mark for chapter 14, verses 55 to 50, uh, 50, uh, 56. You know, back at Matthew chapter uh, 26, verse 60, but found none, yea, though many false witnesses came. Right? Why? Why didn't they, why, why, why they found none? It was, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, it was revealed in Mark chapter 14. Why not? Verse 55. And the chief priests and all the council sought witnesses against Jesus to put him to death and found none. Verse 56. For many, for many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. He said one thing and he said another thing, and they didn't agree. It didn't jive. It didn't gel. They were not credible at all, even, if, even with their lies. Right? No, even the final witnesses got it wrong. All right? Jesus never said temple of God. He didn't say, I'm going to destroy this physical temple and tear it down and rebuild it in three days. John chapter 2, verses 19 and 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple. All right? Destroy this body. And in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. Wilt thou rear up, uh, rear up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. He didn't say the temple of God, he said this temple. All right, then we have the death sentence. 
the kangaroo court had had a very you know had a you know had a very odd way of cross examining the Son of God. All right, the high priest, after producing false witnesses against Jesus, asked him if he was indeed the Christ, the Son of God. I mean, listen, if if I were if I were there. If I was cross-examining a, a, a Christ, I, <laughs> I, I would not have done that in the first place. It was not about, about, I'm getting ahead of myself, all right? Matthew chapter 26, verses 62 and 63. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answers thou nothing? Jesus said nothing, all right, when he was cross-examined. All right, what is it that, uh, what is it which, what is it which these witnesses, uh, uh, witness, uh, these witness against thee? Verse 63. But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, right, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. You know, I'm sure this, highly rec this is a highly recommended way to go about treating God. All right? And Jesus answered honestly. Verse, verse 64. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, which means yes. Nevertheless, I say unto you, here, hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Jesus said, yes, I am the Son of God. I am the Christ. And the reaction from the crowd, all right? Look what happened. The high priest tore his robes. He rent his clothes. That's the first one. And the second one, the court declared Jesus guilty of death. Were they interested in Jesus for whom he was, for what he was? No, they were not. They were interested in catching Jesus in his own words so that they could kill him. All right? Jesus said, I am the Son of God. I am the Christ. Kill him, kill him, kill him. If Jesus, if God appeared before you today and said, I am the Christ, if the real Jesus, not that it's going to happen, would you do that? Kill him, kill him, kill him. All right. Matthew chapter 26, verses 65 and 66. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need uh, uh, have we have, have, have we of witnesses? Behold, now we have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said unto him, and uh, they answered and said, He is guilty of death. You know, the court was not interested that Jesus was indeed the Son of the Most High. They were only interested in incriminating evidence so that they may kill him and vent upon him. Matthew chapter 26, verses 68 and six, uh, 67 and 68. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, prophesy unto us now. All right, prophesy unto us now, thou Christ. Who is he that smote thee? If you're the Christ, you know, hey, prove it to us. I'm like, Luke chapter 22, verses 63 and 65. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him in the, on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many others said, and many other things blasphemously spake they against him. What a wonderful way to, you know, what a wonderful reverential manner to treat God. They were rabidly indignant of Jesus' non-existent blasphemy, but they had no problems with blasphemies themselves. All right? Listen, look at, the, look at the unjustness or rather the illegalities. In their zeal to convict Jesus, the religious righteous broke a number of laws. They encouraged base fellows to, uh, to bear false witness against Christ instead of dealing with them per scriptures. Deuteronomy 5.20, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. All right, the high priest rent his clothes. The robes of the high priest is holy, are holy, and worn, uh, were holy and worn when he represented the people to God. To rend it was to profane the clothes and to profane his office and to profane himself and ultimately to profane God. All right, Leviticus chapter 10, verse 6, and Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons, uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die. Lest wrath come, come upon all the people. You don't do this. And let your brethren in the whole house of Israel bewail the, the, the burning which is, 
which the Lord hath kindled. According to Mishnah Sanhedrin, I believe it's chapter 4, the court and capital cases are to be conducted during the daytime. The trial of Jesus is done at night. That all present may find a witness to, to uh, rather find reason to acquit the accused, not, uh, and, uh, you know, that all present will find some way to acquit the accused, but not all may find him uh, uh, liable, find him guilty. But yet they all answered that he was guilty. Everybody denied the death sentence upon Christ. Judges are not to be very old and, they, and, they, and, and they're not to have children of their own. Why? Because, you know, they need the faculties about them and, and, and if they, and they have ch children of their own, you know, they may be a bit more lenient. Like Caiaphas, the high priest, was a father-in-law, meaning that he had children. Right? Then the capital offense cannot be handled down, handed down on the same day of the trial. But yet they say they deserve, but yet they say he deserved death. Jesus was condemned the same night. The capital cases are not judged on the eve of a festival. The trial of Jesus was held in the preparation of the Passover. Right? Deliberation of capital, uh, ca ca you know, in the, de 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 I'm sorry, in the deliberation of capital cases, judges must first attempt to justify an innocent verdict. This did not happen. They all rabidly wanted Jesus dead. In the deliberation of capital cases, lower judges were to, were, were to state their opinions first. Caiaphas, the high priest, led the others in the, in the guilty verdict. Now, blasphemy is not a capital crime unless it's a blasphemy against God's name. Levit Leviticus chapter 24, verse 16. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, for all the congregation shall surely stone him, as well as, as, well as the stranger, as he that is born in the hand, uh, 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 rather in the land when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall be put to death. How was agreeing with Caiaphas that he was the son of God blasphemy against the name of God? So we got the unjust arrest of Christ, we got the unjust trial of Christ, now we got the unjust crucifixion of Jesus. More kangaroo court. All right. Early the following morning, the religious righteous met with the Sanhedrin to legalize the previous night's shameful actions, right? That led, and then, then they led Jesus bound to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, uh, to have the death sentence carried out. Mark 15, uh, verse 1. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate, right? Here, the rank hypocrisy that Jesus often preached against the religious righteous was made clear as he was led to the governor's uh, uh, judgment hall. Pilate was a Gentile, he was Roman, and going into this house would defile the Jews, right? And because the Passover was just around the corner. And when the religious righteous would not, you know, while the religious right, uh, righteous would not defile themselves ceremoniously, they had utterly no problem with committing murder against an innocent man, in this case, the son of God. Oh, we can't do this because, you know, it will defile us. But in the, and on the other hand, we'll find false witnesses by subtlety to destroy this innocent man. Go figure that out. All right. Then let they, Jesus, from Caiaphas unto the hall, or rather John chapter 18, verse 28. Then let they, Jesus, from, uh, from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, that they might eat the Passover. So for the sake of eating the Passover in an undefiled manner, they, they happily destroyed Jesus. Right. The religious, the religious righteous called Jesus an evildoer when asked by Pilate. Uh, uh, John 18, verses 29 and 30. Pilate went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? And they answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up to thee. We won't have done this if we, if he, we, we won't be here if if he wasn't a malefactor. Pontius Pilate found nothing amiss with Jesus that he should put him to death. After all, Jesus broke no civil law deserving death. He was charged with a religious crime. Verse 31. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye and judge him according to your laws. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Oh! Crucify him! Crucify him! It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. <laughs> so, this, so the thing is, um, so here the Jews plainly admitted that they needed Pilate's help to dispose of Jesus. 
This is a form of plausible deniability. We didn't kill him. We didn't crucify him. The Romans did. All right, but this time they resorted to lies. You know, no, then they resorted to lies. Again, political this time. All right? Luke chapter 23, verse, uh, verse 2. Then they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. Jesus never said anything like that. Jesus never prohibited or, for, or forbade the giving of tribute to, to Caesar. What did he do? He said, Get, you know, you know what, what, what superscription is on this coin? He said, render unto Caesar things that are Caesar and render unto God things that are God's. He never said, no, don't pay tribute to Caesar. But after questioning uh, by Pilate, he found, you know, Pilate found Jesus innocent of capital crime. But to appease the crowd, he was willing to whip Jesus. Luke 23, verse 16, uh, verse th uh, verses 13 through 16. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the, and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people, and behold, I have examined you, him before you and have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. He's innocent. He did nothing wrong. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. All right? The crowd was not happy. Fine. You know, but I found, I found this man uh, 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 innocent. But because of you, I'll whip the guy. I'll whip Jesus. I'll scourge him and they'll let him go. All right? Then we have rabble rousers. Right? You know, but the offended religious righteous were not satisfied and wanted Christ crucified. Or Matthew chapter 27, verses 20, uh, verse 23, And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he, ha, hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. String him up, rather, nail him to the cross. Mark 15, verse 14, And then Pilate said unto, uh, unto them, Why, what evil hath he, done? Has, hath he done? Then they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. Per custom, Pilate was willing to set a prisoner free. Matthew 27, 50, uh, verses 15 and, uh, and, uh, through 17. Now at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. Right? Who would you like, whom would you like me to, to release unto you? Verse 16, and they, and, they, and they then had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Barabbas was a convicted murderer. Mark 15, verse 7. And there was one named Barabbas, which, was, uh, which lay bound with them, that had made insurrection with him, and who, who had committed murder in the insurrection. All right? Barabbas I, 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 I made an insurrection, and during, and, 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 and during the insurrection, he murdered some people or someone. While Pilate was willing to release Jesus, the religious righteous was not. The ins you know, one was innocent, one was guilty. And whom did the religious righteous wanted released? The guilty. They instigated the crowd to demand for Barabbas instead. Mark chapter 15, verses 11 and 13. But the chief priests moved the people. Right? They roused the rabble. <coughs> Excuse me. That he, that he should release Barabbas unto them. And they cried out again, crucify him. Mark chapter, or rather Matthew chapter 27, verse 20 and 22. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Pilate said, saith unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they, said, and they all said unto him, let him be crucified. And then they bullet uh, a Pilate into doing their will. John chapter 19, verse 20. And from, and from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, if thou, let, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against, Jesus, uh, uh, speaketh against Caesar. All right? And John chapter 19, verses 15 and 16. And they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto him, Shall I crucify your king? Right? This king is not 
a physical king, or not a political king, but you know, a religious king. Right? Has, this religious king has got no, you know, has got is not a threat to Caesar's political position. But yet they use this to cajole and to bully Pilate into doing what they wanted to kill Jesus. Right? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. <laughs> so the chief priests, all right, who are supposed to serve God, the king of heaven, the creator of the universe, said, We have no king but Caesar. Verse 16, then delivered him, therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. For political expedience, all right, as Pastor Jesse uh, said, Pilate capitulated to the religious righteous. You know, as Roman governor of the, uh, of, of, of the land, he could have said, no, this man did nothing wrong. I will release him. The lot of you, shut up. He didn't do that. He kind of like, hmm, if I let him go, I may be in trouble with Caesar in case news gets to him. So fine, crucify your Jesus. Go ahead. And then we've got what? We've got the humiliation of Jesus. In the process of being questioned by Pilate, Jesus was scourged. Right? Uh, John chapter 19, verse 1. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. You know, this scourging was not just a whipping or a caning or, or, or something like that. The Roman flagellum was designed to efficiently rip flesh from the body. By the time they were done, Jesus was an unrecognizable mess. Isaiah 52, verse 14. As many were astonished at the, his, vis his, vis his visage was so marred. More than any man has formed more than the sons of men. Right? Jesus was whipped, was, his body was ripped apart. Then he was mocked. All right? The Roman guards mocked Christ. Matthew chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 27, verses 27 uh, through 31. Then the soldiers of the, of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the, a band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Listen. All right? Jesus was beating, his flesh was, his, his flesh was dangling by the skin and all that. And they took off, you know, first they put the clothes on him and then they took it off. It must have hurt. And then they put on a scarlet robe. That must have hurt. And they made a plaited, and they plaited a crown of thorns, right? And they put it on his head. The crown had, was thorny and they put it on his head. That must have hurt and a reed in his right hand, like a scepter. And he bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! You call yourself a king? Hail! And that's not the sort of king that Jesus was. Right? And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. They humiliated Jesus Christ, the creator of the entire universe. His creation humiliating the creator. Verse 31. And after they had mocked him, they took, away, they took, they took the robe from, uh, off from him and put his raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. Jesus Christ had to bear his own cross. While on the cross, the religious righteous mocked him. <laughs> all right? And you know, we all know that Jesus was nailed to the cross. The nails went through here, not the palms, but rather around the, around the wrist. And that caused maximum pain. Matthew chapter 27, verses 39 through 43. And they, had, and, they that passed had, uh, and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, mm -hmm. and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, they mocked him. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him and the scribes and the elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Uh, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Really? They probably would not have done that, even if, 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 he, had, if he had come down from the cross. Verse 43, he trusted in God, let him deliver him, uh, let him deliver him now, if he, if he will have him. He trusted in God. Well, let God deliver him if God will do that. 
Let's see if God will do that. For he said, I am the Son of God. If he will have him. They mock God the Father. He was crucified with the transgressors as it was prophesied. Right? Luke chapter 23, verses 33, verse 33. And, they, and when they come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucify him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and one on the left. Isaiah 53, verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he will, div and he will divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins, uh, the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Despite his agony, Jesus beseeched the mercy of God upon his tormentors. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive him, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiments and cast lots. Right? He bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. That was the mercy and grace of Christ on the cross despite his humiliation, despite his pain, despite his suffering. His heart went out to the people, to the sinners, to the lost. The death of Jesus. You know, it took about six hours for Jesus to die. Six hours of tortuous agony. Six hours is a long time. Right? Six hours is a long time to be hanging on the cross in agony, fate, you, know, you know, suffering humiliation at the hands of his creation. He was crucified around about 9 o'clock and gave up the spirit around about 3 p.m. Right? Mark 15, verse 25, and it was the third hour they crucified him. The third hour is about 9. The first hour started at about 6, it's about 6 o'clock. So the third hour is, is, is 9. And Mark chapter 15, verses 34 and 37, and at the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m., Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, right? which, is to say, which, is being, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. Right? Jesus died about six hours hanging, uh, after about six hours hanging on the cross. After the death of Jesus, the veil of the Holy of Holies was torn apart. Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Mark 15, verse 38. And the temple of the, of the, uh, and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom. In, Ma in Luke chapter 23, verse 45, And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Whereas once the high priest once a year entered into the Holy of Holies to make an offering to God for the people, the death of his son Jesus, all right, and his finished works on the cross for, the salva for salvation of, of the world meant that he and he alone is the only bridge between man and God. Jesus Christ was that man. What was that bridge? Was the only one uh, to you know? Was the only one? John fourteen verse six. Jesus said unto him, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me." Jesus didn't say, "I I am a way." A, uh, no, I am a way. He says, "I am the way, the way." Right. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, that man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The temple, the Holy of Holies, done away. Jesus is the only way to God. It's the only mediator between man and God. Hence, the veil was, hence the significance of that ripping of the veil. All right? So, we have got the unjust arrest of Christ, we got the unjust trial of Christ, we got the unjust crucifixion of Christ, and, you know, here are some thoughts. You know, as I said earlier, I was humbled, because as I was, pre as I was preparing this message, researching it, searching the scriptures, comparing the four gospel accounts, I came to a very sobering, I came to the very sobering knowledge of what Jesus had to go through to purchase my salvation not just mine, indeed the salvation of the entire world. You know, I felt utterly microscopic, utterly undeserving of his mercy, let alone his grace, let alone his blood by his grace. Right? He died for me while I was a sinner, his enemy. You know, he died for you. 
while you are still his enemy and while you're still a sinner. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 and 10. For when we are yet without strength, when we are yet sinners, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. God, you know, Christ died for the sinners, for sinners. Verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, his son died for us while we were enemies of God. Much more being, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Right? So I was humble. How could, why would Jesus go through such injustice for my justification, for your justification, for the justification of sinners, for the justification of the entire world? But yet he did it in obedience to his Father, to God, because he loved the world, Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him, give, given him a name which is above every name. All right? And that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So every knee everywhere will bow. All right? And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In John 3, 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. Jesus came to save the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Right? Um, you know, as I preached before, uh, even though salvation is utterly free of charge to the, to the world, it did not come cheaply uh, uh, to us because it cost God the Father and God the Son a lot. And Jesus Christ suffered the most. Right? You know, Christ could very easily have, um, you know, Christ could very easily have called for help from his Father. Jesus said, he, you know, don't you know that if I could just call to my father here and you send 12 legions of, of, of angels to come to my aid? But he held back. Right? But for the love of the lost, he held back. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. The Son of Man didn't come to condemn. Matthew chapter, uh, 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 rather Matthew chapter 18, verse 11, not 8. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. But go ye and learn what it meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. God came, Jesus came to call the sinners to repentance. For our sakes, Jesus held back. And Jesus suffered. Right? The things that if you're not saved today, remember, what, remember that God has got no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God does not want you to die. If you were to die lost, he does not celebrate, there's no glee, he's got no pleasure. He's got no pleasure, why? Because he loved you. He's got no pleasure, why? Because Jesus suffered for you, right? Um, he wants the wicked to turn from his wickedness. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Remember what Jesus went through for you. Even you know, you know, e even when you deserve absolutely nothing from him other than his hottest wrath. You know, as the, um, you know, as the world goes around hunting for eggs, eating chocolate bunnies, let us be thankful to Christ for his works on the cross that you do not have to bear the penalty of your own sins. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that, were, that was against us, uh, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Indeed, thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, you know, I hope that this message has been of uh, blessing unto you, and that um, and that you will reflect on, uh, reflect on it, think upon it, meditate upon it, think about what Jesus Christ had to go through, just for you, the undeserving. Right, the innocent dying for the guilty, the innocent taking the penalty, or, you know, taking on the penalty of the guilty. Right, because of sin, we have done absolutely nothing to deserve any of His mercy, let alone His grace. But yet, He was merciful to us. God was merciful to us, and God was gracious to us. 
and gave us his only begotten son, that by his sacrifice, by his death, by the shedding of his blood, that our sins may be washed clean, white as wool. Right? You know, the things, I hope you will join us for our Sunday service where Pastor Jesse will preach about the resurrection and, um, and, that, and that, you know, you, and that you, you find out why Jesus had to resurrect. All right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this time for the preaching of your word. And Lord, we just ask that your word will not come back to you void. But that, Lord, that everyone uh, here uh, who who've listened, who heard your word, uh, uh, will, will know uh, uh, what injustices God had, uh, Jesus had to go through just for us, Lord, and, um, and, and what he had to suffer and, um, uh, just to purchase our redemption. Father, we, we confess that we are not deserving of any of your mercy, any of your goodness, any of your grace. And it, it is all because of you, Lord, and not us, that you have given us your only begotten Son. And Lord, so Lord, we just uh, ask that you dismiss us with the riches of your blessings, um, but that you help us to, re- to, to think upon your word, to meditate upon your word, and Lord, to be thankful unto Christ. And for those here who are not saved yet and who have heard the, your, the message of the gospel of Christ and uh, who have been convicted, that, Lord, that they will not hold back anymore for what Jesus Christ had, had done for them. That, Lord, uh, for them, Jesus, the blood of Jesus will not be wasted. Lord, Lord thank you uh, again. Um, uh, we just ask that you be with us. Give us a good week ahead. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you another time. Take care. Bye-bye.